What if the most brilliant minds on Earth were locked in a high-stakes battle, with unlimited funding, where every thought is a potential weapon? We're diving deep into the wall facer strategy, a concept that looks beyond tactics and challenges the basis of how we understand conflict. And it's the plotline from the Remembrance of Earth's past trilogy. Now, the wall facer strategy in Sishin Liu's Free Body Problem series is basically the ultimate chess match, and we need to set the stage first so we understand why the wall facer strategy even comes into play. In the series, as the alien forces called the Trisolarans plan their invasion of Earth, they realize humanity is on its way to developing technology that is strong enough to resist them. To stop this, the Trisolarans create Sophons, two tiny 11-dimensional supercomputers compressed to the size of a proton. The Sophons are then sent to Earth ahead of the invasion, where they disrupt scientific experiments. Because the Sophons are quantum entangled with particles still on the Trisolaran home planet, they can communicate instantly with their homeworld, and this allows the Trisolarans to coordinate with allies on Earth. The Sophons serve as a strategy of technological strangulation. If Earth can't advance, it can't threaten Trisolaris. So how do you fight a foe that hasn't yet arrived, but can also monitor all of your research, and that has just neutered all technological advancement? Enter the wall facer. The Trisolarans' most crippling advantage comes from the Sophons, tiny, nearly omnipotent supercomputers that are folded into the size of a proton. They can spy on every experiment, every meeting, every plan Earth's leaders attempt. In short, nothing is hidden. That means every military or scientific preparation is exposed instantly, giving the invaders this absolutely crushing strategic edge. To fight back, the United Nations create the Planetary Defense Council and launches the Wallfacer Project. A Wallfacer is given unlimited resources, authority, and political backing to develop and strategize against the Trisolarans. But here's the twist. They are not required to tell anyone what their plan actually is. The public may see one thing, the government may hear another, and even close allies may be misled. The Wallfacer's real intent is known only to themselves. And the name Wallfacer comes from this ancient, romanticized image of a monk meditating while facing a wall, silent, impenetrable, and untouchable. And this really captures the essence of the role, a strategist who hides their thoughts behind a barrier, forcing their enemies to guess what is being planned. And that raises a bigger question. Is this the ultimate, real-world model of asymmetric warfare? or just a fun narrative cooked up by a sci-fi novelist. Let's take a look at some game theory foundations. In game theory, most models assume some level of shared information. Even if players conceal parts of their strategy, both sides usually know the rules of the game. The Wallfacer project flips this completely. The opponent sees everything the Wallfacer wants them to see except the one thing that matters most, which is intent. And this creates something called information asymmetry. In game theory, players make choices based on what they know. If all players have the same information, that's called perfect information. Think of something like a game of chess, where both players see the whole board. But with information asymmetry, one player knows something the other doesn't. That hidden info changes the game because strategies aren't being chosen on equal footing. Think of the game poker. You know your own cards, but your opponent doesn't know your cards because that's private information. Because of this, bluffing works. You can pretend your hand is stronger or weaker than it really is. The entire strategy of poker is built on information asymmetry. If everyone's cards were face up, aka perfect information, the game would be boring and predictable. 
So in game theory, information asymmetry matters because it changes the equilibrium. The best move for each player depends not on just the rules of the game, but also what information they don't have about the other players. And the Trisolarans with their Sophons can monitor the entire world in microscopic detail. They still don't know what a wall facer is truly planning. And that brings up a new concept in game theory called the Nash Equilibrium, where each player reacts to the other player's strategy until neither can improve their position. But if one player can't even guess the other's move, how do they respond? They're forced to react to rumors, signals, and purposeful misdirection. Deception then isn't a tool within the wall facer strategy, it's the whole strategy. Every action may be a bluff, every statement a misdirection. Even when a wall facer openly reveals a plan, no one can be sure if that's the real plan or not. This constant uncertainty creates something like a paralysis for the opponent. And while it's a brilliant strategy within the world of three-body problem, there's also a cost. The wall facer carries an immense psychological burden. To main secrecy, they must lie to allies, mislead the public, and carry out all plans in isolation. Imagine knowing the fate of humanity rests on a plan you can't explain, while everyone around you questions it, doubts it, or even undermines you. And this brings us into real-world application beyond fiction. Because we don't face alien fleets, but the wallfacer logic isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. In today's world, cyber espionage, satellite surveillance, and real-time intelligence gathering make secrecy harder than ever. States often find their military movements, communications, or research efforts are exposed within days or even instantly. In that environment, the wallfacer approach is a really powerful tool. Imagine giving a single strategist or a small hidden group the job of building long-term plans without them needing to share them with allies, enemies, or even their own institutions. And we already see shades of this in cyber warfare, where attacks are launched by faceless entities and strategies often unfold over years in hidden networks. Or in disinformation campaigns where false signals are deliberately spread to confuse opponents. Intelligence professionals often describe their work in terms of known unknowns and unknown unknowns. Wallfacer style thinking takes it a step further structuring entire doctrines around the idea that secrecy and deception are the primary weapons. If the wallfacer plan was used in real geopolitics, a wallfacer role could serve as a safeguard for national security. This figure would have the authority to direct resources, build hidden capabilities, and prepare for threats without having to disclose the full picture. In theory, this could protect a state from espionage, leaks, or political turnover. But there's a major paradox here because there are very real challenges and limitations. The wallfacer model sounds attractive, but its flaws are just as big because the first is accountability. In the novels, wallfacers are granted virtually unlimited resources and power, and that works in fiction. But in a democracy, who could be trusted with such unchecked authority? Without oversight, the risks of corruption, abuse, or catastrophic mistakes skyrocket exponentially. Second is credibility. If even the wallfacer's allies can't know the plan, how can they commit resources or trust the wallfacer's judgment? A single leak, a public backlash, or a shift in leadership could undermine the entire strategy. The third problem is choosing who becomes a wallfacer. Should it be a president who's focused on short-term elections, a general who's tied to the military, or an outsider like Liu Ji who is a sociologist with no clear qualifications but 
surprising insight. In reality, just deciding who gets that role could freeze governments and create an uprising within the population. Finally, there's the massive psychological toll. Liu Ji's story shows how destructive the burden can be. He begins by squandering his position, using resources for personal comfort, like drinking good wine on a mountainside estate and requesting his handlers find him the perfect dream wife, all while insisting he has no plan. Eventually, the authorities place his wife and children in hibernation to force him into action. Later, as both a wall facer and eventually a sword holder, Leoji is worshipped as both a savior and monster, totally isolated from the society he's trying to protect. In the real world, giving one person this kind of role would play out with a brutal personal cost. But is this the future of strategy? We live in a world where almost nothing can stay hidden. Satellites watch every corner of the earth. Data leaks happen all the time. Secrets are exposed and cyber attacks reach across borders in seconds. These examples make the Wallfacer idea more relevant than ever. In the future, whether in nuclear strategy, cybersecurity, or international diplomacy, success might just depend less on sheer military power and more on the ability to conceal intent. When everyone can see what you do, the only thing you can hide is why you're doing it. But this raises a human question. Can a strategy built on secrecy and misdirection ever foster trust? Or does it trap us in a cycle of suspicion? Leo Sishen doesn't give an easy answer. The wall facer is both a brilliant strategy and a cautionary story. It's a lot like an invitation to imagine new ways of thinking and a warning about the cost of deception. Today, we navigate a hyper-connected, hyper-visible world and tension feels more real than ever. It reminds us that in the struggle between transparency and strategy, the human stakes, trust, fear, and hope are always at the center. The remembrance of Earth's past trilogy might be one of the most imaginative series when it comes to the question of surveillance and modern game theory, and if that's something that interests you, you should definitely read this series. Thanks for watching, find my links in the description, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.